Thanks. This is such a wonderful symposium. I just squeaked when I saw it, saw that it was existing. Thanks for organizing it. How's the volume in the back? Speak louder. Okay. Just wave your hands if I start to drone off. So I'm part of a citizen science project called the Lost Ladybug Project. It's based at Cornell University in Ithaca, New York, but we're an um, international project studying uh, ladybugs all over North America. And we have participants um, all over North America. We've had a Facebook presence since, since 2010, mostly to bring in participants into our, um, our citizen science project and to answer questions. Um, and, but our major goal with the Facebook page was not only education, but to drive an audience, of, uh, an ever-growing audience of of ladybug photographers to our web page where there's a convenient little button on the right side where you can go directly to our form and upload your ladybug photographs which is the data um, that we seek as well as being a, a public science information um, project. You can see we've been going to, um, since 2008, and so far we've used social media in a general way um, to help build this database that's now over 28,000 um, photographs of ladybugs. Each, fo each photograph is identified by us. Um, and each person gets a personal email thanking them and telling them what ladybug they've found. And I also want to do a shout out to the NSF for funding us and supporting us. So the background on our project before I launch into our um, foray into an in invasive species study is that there are three or four native species of ladybugs that have declined um, incredibly fast over the last 30 to 40 years. This is an example, Coccinella transverso guttata. We call it the transverse or sometimes just the trans. Um, over on the far side is a 1985 map from Gordon, uh, the king of Coccinellas. Um, that's its original range. And you can see the map on the right is Lost Ladybug Project data. And it's disappeared from most of its eastern range and um, is, is, is declining um, also in the west. But so we're trying to follow that. One possible explanation for this decline is the influence and competition from Harmonia exeritis, which is an invasive ladybug or an introduced ladybug. Its original range is up on the right in the hatched area, and then this is a, um, from Brown 2011, a long paper just chronicling the um, movement of the species across the world. Now, it still does a wonderful job at um, pest control. So don't get me wrong, we're not against it. We're just wanting to know what the heck it's up to and whether it's really impacting um, our native species. We got in on, on the whole question um, later in the game, Harmonia had already really been established um, in the early nine, 90s. But in 2006, 
It was finally found in, in Montana to be established, and then Lost Ladybug Project participants found it in Arizona in 2008. So then remained Wyoming, our holy grail. And that's what I'm going to tell you the story about, is, is how we chased after um, finding evidence of harmonia in the last state in the lower 48. This is a challenge that we've been chasing after for quite a few years. We've had four different forays by people in our project doing surveys in Wyoming. We've coordinated with um, Wyoming Cooperative Extension on this question to no avail. So we finally went back, just kind of on a whim, to our, our social media to our Facebook page, and I had dropped a few posts onto the Facebook and didn't get much response. So finally, I started looking at the ads that Facebook is very happy to sell us, and I decided to post one. This was in 2013. So there's a little bit of a mock-up of the ad on the left, and then on the right is the targeting options that Facebook gives you. So they're, they're basically saying, I believe, that there's a 220,000 um, person audience available in Wyoming. And then I put in the age ranges and also the interests to try to capture um, an audience that might be responsive. So it ran for two weeks and cost about $350. So 50,000 people received the ad. Close to 1,500 people responded in some way electronically by either liking the ad or clicking through right through to our website or clicking through to our Facebook page and, and, and um, liking that. 96 people shared the ad, so that was a potential for v viralness. And um, 81 people wrote in, which was very fun to have that much um, banter on our Facebook page. Even though we have over 7,000 likes on our page, it can get a little slow in the conversation, um, depending on what I am throwing up on our Facebook page. So this was, this was quite a topic for conversation. Just people, mostly in Wyoming, responding to, to our ad. So 14 people actually went out there, either looked through their photographs and sent us the photographs of ladybugs, or actually went out and took pictures of ladybugs in response to our ad. And lo and behold, we actually got two images of Harmonia axiridis. After years of searching, we attained our goal, so we were happy. And this is just kind of a backdrop on how long it took. The participation from people in Wyoming in our project had been quite low starting in the first year that we went online. And, you know, it was just dribs and drabs of two, three, two, one, three people um, actually submitting photographs. Now, in 2013, the little red line is the one person who submitted before the ad went out. We put the ad out um, at a little bit strange time. It was a little edgy for the weather in Wyoming, but we figured because of the overwintering um, behavior of Harmonia, where they aggregate late in the fall before they over looking for places, mostly buildings in your home, um, to, to overwinter, we figured if we put the ad out in October, we might increase our chances of actually getting people taking pictures of those ladybugs. So even in October, we got these 14 submissions, many more than we had ever had before. So we repeated the whole thing in 2014 and got similar results. So this is just some of the conversation um, that happened. The, the top one 
It's just a little illustration of, of the variety of people and people's abilities um, at, the, at English language. I'm not making fun of it. I'm just bringing it to our attention that language is important. We don't, I mean, we don't want to talk down to people um, in our responses even. And then there's a variety of things. The funniest one was a woman who um, reads our Facebook page using Siri because she's blind and she says Siri, she swears she said, said lady butt, not ladybug. The other group of responses that I found so interesting and that we were using um, for other purposes is people really wanted to know why are these ladybugs declining? And most people's opinions, people who offered opinions, were that it's pesticides. A few people um, offered global warming, and uh, one astute person talked about changes in entire ecosystems. So I just want to bring home the, the last point of how strong and useful social media is for getting um, scientific data. This is the data that we had at the before we put out the ad about this one um, native species, transverse, and this is what we got after the ad, and we can then follow the influence of the, of the um, invasive species um, in the future. So that's just our, um, the full um, ad that went out in two, 2013. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.